Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk today about uh, one addition to the MySQL uh, database server, which is not that visionary as the previous talk, but, uh, well, I guess still pretty technical and very useful, I hope. Uh, okay, so we are going to, to uh, talk about uh, the MySQL firewall. Right, okay, so uh, first of all, uh, a little bit about me. It's my fourth conference already, so I guess most of you know me. But I've been with MySQL for, well, longer than I can remember now. Uh, and I've been, uh, I'm working on uh, security and uh, monitoring the server. Um, also some personal facts about me here. All right, so uh, the agenda is, first of all, we will actually try to understand what is the MySQL firewall, uh, how does it work, and we will also have um, um, an example with a WordPress installation, how to secure it and how to make it more robust, and uh, hopefully we will have some time for discussion too. Okay, so... The, what is MySQL Firewall? It's really, really simple. It's just a uh, tool to make uh, SQL injection attacks harder. Uh, and uh, so uh, SQL injection attacks are one of the most well-known uh, data uh, breach and investigation uh, breaches to web applications. So here is a quote from a very reputable uh, yearly report that is done on security. If you are not familiar with uh, Verizon's uh, report, uh, probably you should if you are interested in security. And that's what they say. Uh, it, they call the SQL injection attacks the elder statesman of <laughs> breach uh, vectors into web applications. So it is actually really important that, um, well, we should take all measures possible to protect against them. Okay, so why a MySQL fire, uh, firewall? It's a better SQL application security. Uh, user accounts can execute uh, only the SQL that the application uh, provides to the server. It also provides defense in depth. So uh, it's an extra layer. It does not interact directly with the other layers of security. So um, you can take this extra measure and uh, provide another level of defense for your database. And it uh, also does not need, uh, does not require application changes. Your application runs as it does, uh, and the server is the one that uh, can take uh, and apply that extra security measure. And here is my favorite uh, cartoon on the subject. I, I don't know if you are familiar <laughs> with XKCD, but uh, this is really hilarious. So this is why um, SQL injection is important, and th this is what it can do to you. Um, so, yeah. Right, uh, so how does this all work? What does uh, the firewall uh, what is the firewall, basically? So it is an engine that sits inside the, the MySQL server and it compares the incoming queries uh, and then normalizes uh, these queries. And, uh, well, it uh, has a statements cache, uh, which basically keeps a cache of all the queries that are allowed to be executed, and then uh, it compares the incoming queries uh, against that statement cache. So this is, in a nutshell, the, the architecture of it. Uh, so here is how it operates. You have the MySQL server and you have the, MySQL, uh, the firewall plugin uh, which sits in front of the server proper. So when a query comes in, it goes and checks, okay, so uh, this is a query that I need to normalize. It uh, normalizes the query by removing the, the constants and removing the, const, uh, the comments and the white space and all of that. 
then it uh, searches the um, uh, statement cache uh, and uh, basically it finds such a query which is select question mark plus question mark. So uh, this query can actually go in and uh, well be executed by the MySQL server. What if another query comes in? So this is the most popular form of SQL injection. You take one of the constants and you replace it with another statement. Well, part of the previous statement and then the, the statement that does the actual harm. So this is what this query looks, uh, looks uh, like if you replace the two with this, uh, well, extra data there and it's not properly escaped. You will get a statement like that. Select one plus two or some select query or some update query, whatever. And, uh, but it's not in the cache, so the, the firewall will deny it and it will never even land in the, in the, uh, well, execution engine. Okay, this may be a bit small, but, um, right, so this is the full state diagram of the, of the firewall. So it receives a statement from the client, it uh, makes a digest of it, then it checks uh, if the user is, um, well, protecting or detecting in, in uh, queries, unknown queries. And if it is in the white list, then it is executed. If it's not in the white list, it is uh, subjected to these additional measures and uh, eventually rejected. As you see here, there is a recording mode, uh, this part here. So uh, when the user is in recording mode, the query will still be executed, but uh, it will also be stored into the whitelist. So this is how you fill in the whitelist with uh, queries. Okay, so installation is pretty simple. This is our uh, GUI tool for administering the MySQL server, and it has a firewall section here. As you can see here, it's uh, already installed, so you get the options to uninstall or disable. But, uh, well, it, there is a button which says install here if, uh, if it's not installed. So it's that simple to install it in its basic form. Um, well, behind the scenes, it's of course all command line and uh, being the um, kind of the traditional SQL developer that I am, I wanted to show you here the command to actually install the firewall uh, through the command line. Uh, so it's, a, it's this single command that at the top, uh, we have an SQL script that does all these uh, installations. And then you can check whether the firewall is operational by, uh, well, checking the status variable that says if it is or not. Okay, so operating the firewall. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the modes of the firewall, just give you a practical example. I've taken a WordPress installation and I, uh, well, uh, run it through the firewall just to demonstrate its usefulness. Okay, so step one, install WordPress. It's, well, a thing that most of you have done already, probably, so I won't go into the details of that. But uh, the WordPress uses a um, default database user, WordPress at localhost, and it runs against, uh, obviously, a local MySQL server because it, uh, that's how the, the user account is defined. Uh, and it's also, the MySQL server is also seeded with uh, schema and data for WordPress. There is a script and a procedure for that. Uh, so I've just installed the WordPress with all the, the, the default settings, as you can see here at the start page of my WordPress installation. All right. So the next thing we do is we need to put the firewall in recording um, 
mode for that particular user because there are no queries in the whitelist, so we need to add some, basically. And we add that by uh, putting the firewall in recording mode and then, uh, well, running through the WordPress web pages just to, well, make it execute the queries that it executes. So how do you put a user in recording mode? You go again in the SQL workbench and uh, you basically take uh, users and privileges and then, uh, well, select the WordPress user and change the mode to recording. So um, again, um, a GUI operation, but for the people curious how to do it on the command line, I have the command line on top as well. Uh, so it's a call to one stored procedure that enables recording mode, basically. Right, so step three, this is the relatively non-trivial part. You need to click through all of the WordPress sequences that you want to stay enabled when you move to protected mode. Uh, okay, so what I did was I uh, went into the WordPress installation and I uh, saved a draft, created a post, saved, saved a draft of it. Uh, that's pretty much what I started with. And this generates some queries, as can be seen here. So um, this single sequence generated 63 queries, which is, well, quite a lot. And as you can see here, some of the queries are actually um, normalized. There are um, obviously parameters here, which are uh, the result of the normalization. So these are all the statements that the WordPress installation would execute against uh, the, micro, uh, the MySQL server. Right, and you can actually monitor them in the GUI. There is a firewall rules tab in the GUI. Uh, it will show you the active rules and the rules that are being recorded. So the, as the WordPress, you're clicking through WordPress goes on, this part will actually increase more and more, and there will be more queries here. Uh, you can also uh, do that on stages. So basically you can take the WordPress installation, do the basic exercise uh, through its pages, and then save the result. You can even save it to a file, uh, then you can load the file into um, the running MySQL server table and so on. And uh, once you well, are done with that and you discover that you forgot something, you can put it again in uh, recording mode, record another session of it and then add it to the already existing rules that are in effect. So it can be an incremental process. You can do it uh, on different users because obviously these queries, they don't really depend on the actual username. So you can have like a test user that you use to record the queries and then move these queries uh, to the active user that the WordPress uses. There's a lot of possibilities there. Uh, right, so once you are done with that, you can move to the interesting part, which is basically a shields up mode. So you say to the, to the server, okay, now I want um, this user, WordPress as localhost, protected not recording anymore. Now, now this basically activates the firewall. Okay, you, uh, the, once you do that, you can then continue clicking through WordPress and observe the statistics. So this is, uh, the, these are the statistics after uh, one page after me trying to publish a post because, well, I didn't record it publishing the post. So um, when I tried publishing the post, it didn't work, of course, because the firewall prevented it. And I got 50 queries denied as a result. Uh, then me doing some more actions down the line, you can see how the access denied uh, and access granted counts increase. Okay, so what does suspicious mean here? 
uh, as I mentioned, the firewall can just record a violation. It will not uh, stop the query from being executed. It will just record that this query was executed and uh, so that the DBA can later review the activity. So this is what suspicious means. It's either denied or suspicious, one of those two. Right, and uh, this also gives me a running count of my 63 queries that I recorded and uh, that are active in the, um, well, the whitelist uh, table. All right, and this is what the application would get when uh, a statement is prevented at, um, uh, through the firewall. So if you execute a statement, select version is obviously not something that the, the WordPress was, would execute. So I get uh, an error. As a result, statement was blocked by the firewall. And these are excerpts from the Apache error log uh, that logs that certain uh, WordPress uh, operations were, uh, well, actually denied by the firewall. Uh, WordPress is uh, trying to hide this fact, so basically when this works, you will not get any indication uh, on the WordPress pages themselves that the operations will just not complete. So basically, uh, well, if you click publish a post, it will say okay, and then the post is not going to be published. There's no error indication there, unfortunately. So this is how you check that the error actually was a database one. All right, uh, this was the basic mode of operation of the firewall. Uh, but it does support uh, some additional options as well. As I mentioned, it can lock the queries that are suspicious, not in the whitelist. And uh, it can do that instead of or in addition to blocking them. So you can block and lock. You can just lock. You can, uh, well, just block, obviously, or do nothing. Uh, okay, so the... Uh, the tables that store the whitelist rules are not anyhow special. They are just normal server tables. Um, you can copy them into other tables. You can, uh, well, inspect them. You can add additional queries to them. Um, it's basically all there. Uh, there are ways to manipulate these statistics that I've uh, shown previously, so these statistics. If you want to reset them, there is a way to, to do that, of course. Uh, and it can, uh, as I mentioned, it can aggregate rule sets. You can record one session, then somehow add manually additional things to the whitelist, record another session, add it to the whitelist, remove stuff from the whitelist, basically manipulate it fully. Uh, right. And that's pretty much how it operates, the firewall. Okay. Um, that concludes my, my overview of the firewall. I guess we are a bit early here. So I, th that will leave us with some time for questions. Um, any questions, anybody? Yes, sir. Is the firewall function available within uh, embedded MySQL? Okay, so you are asking whether the firewall would work with the embedded MySQL server. Well, with the embedded MySQL server, first of all, um, you don't really have user connections. Basically, all of your so-called connections to the server are running with root privileges. Um, people don't really use it like that because you cannot really connect to it uh, to set up the whitelist and all of that. It will have to be done by that same user, so it kind of makes it a moot point. Te technically, eventually we can make it work, but we just don't see the, the practical usefulness for it. How would you use it? Uh, 
to be honest, no idea. I just had somebody asked me about embedded MySQL, so I was mm. curious as to what security features are within embed MySQL and whether this would be able to provide some of those features. Well, embedded MySQL is more like a Berkeley DB of a sort. I mean, it does not have a user model uh, the, in the um, embedded uh, mode. The, all of the ACLs are practically turned off. Uh, so it's just a database store, I mean, table store, nothing more. Okay. Okay, so first interesting talk, and I'd say it sounds like up a more from my SQL. I'm really happy to see that. Mm -hmm. So first question: Do you expect MariaDB to catch this up? <sighs> well, uh, I know that my colleagues, former colleagues from MariaDB, are fully able to catch up with this. So whether they would do it or not. It's, of course, driven by their own interest. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So it's possible, at least. Everything is. Mm -hmm. Yes. The next question, you showed how to check or set the rules with the GUI. Is that a command line client to do it? Yeah. Okay, so I uh, had a little bit of a demonstration of the GUI here. Uh, so the way you manipulate the rules is basically through these buttons over here. So you can um, save them to a file and then edit them from there. Um, I, we don't really have like a manipulation. Oh, well, sorry, there is an out and delete. So you can also do individual rules. We also provide some functions for you that will do the normalization. So if you have like a normal query, but you need to store it as normalized, as that's how the server will use it, yeah, there is a special SQL function that will convert each query to its normalized form. So is this available on the command line also somehow, or do I have to do some raw SQL queries to insert it into the whitelist table, if I don't want to use the GUI mode? Well, I didn't actually try the add button, but I suspect that it will normalize it for you. If it doesn't, please file a bug, we will yes. make it do it, of course. So, in the last question, Let's say I don't, I have not only one WordPress installation on my server, but 10. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to say apply the same rules for this other user, but of course with another database? Okay, so basically um, you do it for one of your users, then you save it as a file. Then you go to your other user and add it from a file. You can copy these things. Okay, thank you. Thanks. More questions, anybody? No? Great, thanks for showing up and thanks for your attention. <laughs>